The interaction system of this template is based on a four action system, meaning players always have up to four possible options to interact with an actor. You can assign an interaction to one of the buttons, which are defined as top, left, right and bottom button interactions. As the template is intended to work with gamepads, these buttons represent the face buttons of a gamepad, for example A, B, X or Y. The interaction system will send a different message for each button to the focused item, which can then respond to it individually. This looks like a nice spot to get some rest. To understand how to set up custom interaction buttons, you'll have to know how interactive items in this template work in general. All interactive actors inherit from either BP base interactive object or BP base interactive character based on whether they're using static or scattered little meshes. These actors control the main interaction functionality, read their data from the provided table and handle outline and user interface visibility. The interaction system can detect interactive actors since their mesh components use the object type interactive. Focusing an actor of this class will read their data and display the UI widget. Interacting with them will send an interface message to the focused actor which will execute one of the predefined interaction events based on interaction input. As a demonstration I'm now going to create a new interactive actor. This is done by creating a new blueprint derived from BP base interactive object. Before we do anything with it, let's have a look at what's inside. In terms of components, the interactive object base class already comes with a static mesh component called object, a duplicate used for outlining we can ignore for now, a scene component called focus point, the interaction widget and another scene component called actor center. Let's go through them one by one. For the object mesh, let's pick something distinct, like this TV mesh. I rotate it by 90 degrees to point forward on the x-axis. We skip the object outline since it will be set up automatically. The focus point is the target location the camera will look at when using the default look at functionality. So let's move this somewhere around the object center. We also want to move the interaction widget to a reasonable location. This is where the interaction prompt will be displayed in-game. The actor center component is used for actor visibility and trace detections and should be moved to the center position of your mesh. When we now place the actor in the level, we can already see our interaction working. However, it is not showing us a proper name and there are no options for interaction. Let's go back to our actor blueprint and make sure we have the class defaults active in the right hand panel, either by clicking on class defaults at the top or selecting the blueprint name above the components list. The section we care about is the object setup. Please ignore the data section at the top, those variables are populated by the system at runtime only. The first thing we might want to do is to change the arrow direction. For this we have four options, up, down, left or right. Once changed, you can see a preview of the in-game HUD in the Blueprint viewport. As a next step, we want to fill in custom data for this interactive TV actor. We don't add information in the Blueprint directly. Instead, we populate a data table with all required information about this object and then simply select the data table entry in our Blueprint class or in a Blueprint instance that's placed in the game level. You can use the already existing data table or create a new one of the same type. For this example, I'm going to create a new table. Inside the table, create a new entry and change the name of the row to make it easier to find later. With the row selected, you can find all relevant item information at the bottom area of the data table editor. Type in the object name or select the name from a string table if you have one and expand the interaction tab. Here you can see that for all four interaction options we don't have anything provided. There are interactive blueprints in this template which already have implemented functionality assigned to one or more buttons. A new blueprint, however, can be freely assigned as it inherits directly from the base interactive object class and doesn't come with any additional functionality. 
So let's say on the left button, we'd like to automatically focus the camera on the TV for a short moment. On another button, let's say the top button, we want to turn the TV on or off. Back in our new interactive actor blueprint, we can now find and select our new data table and row entry in the class defaults. When we test our actor in game, we can actually see the name we provided as well as our custom interaction options. However, pressing the respective buttons on the keyboard or gamepad won't have any effect yet. Let's get back to our blueprint and wire up the logic. I will first remove the unused nodes in the event graph to free up space. Every blueprint that inherits from an interactive actor base class can override the input events for each interaction button. To do so, simply right click in the event graph and type event button interaction. This will show you all four options. We're going to select the functions for the left and top button to match the information we provided in the data table. We decided on the left button interaction we want to look at the object. Each interactive actor already has functionality for this included, which can be accessed by calling the camera focus event. Connecting this event to our input function is all we've got to do, as we can see in a quick test. To turn the TV on and off, we need to do some extra steps. First, let's open our TV material. In the material instance, we see that we have a parameter for screen color. We should be able to use this parameter to toggle the TV on and off. I'm going to create a simple logic for changing this color parameter every time we use the top interaction button on this actor. Now we're actually able to turn the TV on and off. You might have noticed that our static user interface text is only correct when the TV is turned off. As a quick solution, we can modify the interaction button structure of this actor based on the current state of the TV. Now the user interface would always show the correct interaction prompt. I hope this tutorial helped you to understand and use the interaction system in the template and allows you to create custom interactions or modify the included functionality.